The Devil's Main Strategies 2 Corinthians 11.14 And it is no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. The body of Christ, you and I, have been and continue to be victims of the devil's strategies which he has repeated over and over throughout generations. Allow me, through the scriptures, to expose these strategies of the enemy. The first strategy the devil uses is to take advantage of an unteachable spirit. An unteachable spirit is a spirit that is full of self-righteousness. God says one thing in his word, and you and I behave differently because we think we know better. Proverbs 21, verses 1 through to 8. The king's heart is in the land of the Lord, as are the watercourses. He turns it whichever way he wills. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs and tries the hearts, and the devil takes advantage of this. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughtiness of eyes and a proud heart, even the tillage of the wicked or the lamp of joy to them, whatever it may be, are sin in the eyes of God, and the devil takes advantage of this. The thoughts of the steadily diligent tend only to plentiousness, but everyone who is impatient and hasty hastens only to want. Securing treasures by a lying tongue is a vapor driven to and from. Those who seek them seek death. The violence of the wicked shall sweep them away because they refuse to do justice. The way of the guilty is exceedingly crooked, but as for the pure, his work is right, and his conduct is straight. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs and tries the hearts, and the devil takes advantage of this. When someone's beliefs are centered upon just themselves, we have the definition for self-righteousness. Their beliefs are superior to all those around them. As Christians, there is a much clearer meaning for what righteousness entails. For a Christian to be labeled as self-righteous, this would mean they are defining their faith not in God, nor His Word, but themselves. The majority of people who prophesy to be Christians are stuck here. Romans 12, 2 And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is explained better in the following psalm. Psalm 1, verses 1 to 6. Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives, not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purpose, nor stands, submissive and inactive, in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest, where the scornful and the mockers gather. But his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord, and on his law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God, he habitually meditates, ponders and studies by day and by night. The devil in his strategies makes sure this does not happen, and he shall be like a tree firmly planted and tended by the streams of water ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not fade or wither, and everything he does shall prosper and come to maturity. Not so the wicked, those disobedient and living without God are not so, but they are like the chaff, worthless, dead without substance, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked, those disobedient and living without God, shall not stand justified in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God. For the Lord knows and is fully acquainted with the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, those living outside God's will, shall perish end in ruin and come to naught. Being a child of God is not understood by higher institutes of learning. 
Overcoming the strategies of the devil is a non-academic matter, but spiritual. Hence, the Bible says this in Romans 12, 2. Do not allow this world to mold you in its own image. Instead, be transformed from the inside out by renewing your mind. As a result, you will be able to discern what God wills and whatever God finds good, pleasing, and complete. Alternatively expressed as, stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Righteousness is determined by a person who follows after God, not after sin, and someone who prospers for choosing to follow God. A righteous Christian reflects on God's law day and night, meaning all day and every day they are living a life according to what God ascribes. The primary indicator of righteousness is that a Christian lives according to God's word. Proverbs 1, 7 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. How then can Christians be connected to God as a source of wisdom, but also be self-righteous? Man does not determine right and wrong. God does. This is our problem. Christians run the risk of being close-minded when they stop learning from God. This is our problem. Instead, seeking reproof, they see whatever knowledge they have as sufficient for living a comfortable life. This is our problem. A life like that is not dedicated to the Lord. However, that life is lived for self. Christians open to learning who realize there is much more they still don't know will become more like Christ. Those who do not learn cannot be changed or grown. As we know, people who are self-righteous define their morals and beliefs based on what they know. Are you one of them? If you are, the devil's strategy is working in your life. Yet, as Christians, our source of wisdom is meant to be God. Everyone has an opinion, but not everyone has the truth. 2 Corinthians 11.14 And it is no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. The body of Christ, you and I, have been and continue to be victims of the devil's strategies, which he has repeated over and over throughout generations. God is our standard. Let us measure ourselves by Scripture and not otherwise. 2 Corinthians 10.12 of course, we wouldn't dare to put ourselves in the same class or compare ourselves with those who rate themselves so highly. They compare themselves to one another and make up their own standards to measure themselves by. And then they judge themselves by their own standards. What self-delusion! God is our standard. Let us measure ourselves by Scripture and not otherwise. For we would never dare to compare ourselves with people who have based their self-worth on self-commendation. They check themselves against and compare themselves with one another. It just shows that they don't have any sense. So we will carefully limit our boasting to the extent only of what God has done in and through us. We carefully put limits on our boasting and avoid taking credit for what others do. But we do hope to see your faith grow so that we can watch our mission really expand all the way to the limits God has set for us. The one who boasts must boast in the Lord. Now, let's be clear. It's not the one who commends himself who is approved. It's the one whom the Lord commends. God is our standard. Let us measure ourselves by Scripture and not otherwise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. God bless you. Hidden Sins Proverbs 28, verse 13 If you hide your sins, you will not succeed. If you confess and reject them, you will receive mercy. 
In our immaturity and ignorance, one of the things that we do is to hide our sins from people and forget that we cannot do it to God. It is God who matters and not people around us. May the Holy Spirit give us grace as we try to understand this childish behavior of hiding sin from God per se. Let us be honest with each other. There is no such thing as hidden sin. Trying to hide sin from God is like running away from your shadow. Sadly, you can never get away. You can't run away from God because He knows everything. Your family and friends might not know about your secret sin, but God knows. All the skeletons in your closet should be confessed because unconfessed sin can block you from God. This is what the Bible is referring to in Proverbs 28 verse 13. If you hide your sins, you will not succeed. If you confess and reject them, you will receive mercy. Brethren, where do you stand in this subject? Before we unearth items that are favorite candidates of the closet, let us hear what the end result is of such a scenario. The Bible says that anyone who does this will not succeed. If you hide your sins, you will not succeed. What is blocking your success? Do some self-searching. What is blocking your success? What is blocking your business? Why does it seem that you are a failure every time you try something? Do some self-searching. What is blocking your studies? Do some self-searching. What is blocking your marriage? Do some self-searching. What is blocking your career? Proverbs 28 verse 13 If you hide your sins, you will not succeed. If you confess and reject them, you will receive mercy. The solution to some of these problems may be found in the solution provided by the same scripture. If you confess and reject them, hidden sins, you will receive mercy. If you confess and reject them, the things hidden in your closet, you will receive mercy. For example, the private feasting of inappropriate images you indulge in, child of God. Confess and reject them, and reject this spirit, child of God. You are not a child of filth. You are not unclean. Why defile the temple of God? Child of God, the Bible speaks of you as holy, according to 1 Peter 1 verses 13 to 19. So then, prepare your hearts and minds for action. Stay alert and fix your hope firmly on the marvelous grace that is coming to you. For when Jesus Christ is unveiled, a greater measure of grace will be released to you. As God's obedient children, never again shape your lives by the desires that you followed when you didn't know better. Instead, shape your lives to become like the Holy One who called you. For Scripture says, You are to be holy, because I am holy. Since you called on Him as your Heavenly Father, the impartial judge who judges according to each one's works, live each day with holy awe and reverence throughout your time on earth. For you know, that your lives were ransomed once and for all from the empty and futile way of life handed down from generation to generation. It was not a ransom payment of silver and gold, which eventually perishes, but the precious blood of Christ, who, like a spotless, unblemished lamb, was sacrificed for us. If you confess and reject them, the things hidden in your closet, you will receive mercy. 
The other dangerous thing about trying to hide your sins is that you fool yourself. You might think you're getting away with it, and that leads to deliberately sinning and backsliding. This is deadly and something that no Christian should do. Be happy. God knows all your sins because that's a reminder He is always with you. Lay down that burden. Confess your sins today. Proverbs 28 verse 13 If you hide your sins, you will not succeed. If you confess and reject them, you will receive mercy. The solution to some of these problems may be found in the solution provided by the same scripture. If you confess and reject them, hidden sins, you will receive mercy. If you confess and reject them, adultery and fornication, you will receive mercy. For scripture says, Psalm 69 verse 5, God, you know what I have done wrong. I cannot hide my guilt from you. Surely God knows your secret rendezvous where you do these ungodly acts. No wonder the guilt grows day by day. It is a spirit that needs the blood of Jesus to break. The solution is in the Word. If you confess and reject them, adultery and fornication, you will receive mercy. The scriptures are very clear about hidden sin. Psalm 44 verses 20 to 21. If we had forgotten the name of our God, or lifted our hands to a foreign God, wouldn't God find out, since he knows the secret of the heart? Psalm 90 verse 8. You have set our wrongdoing before you, our secret sins in the light of your face. Numbers 32 verse 23. But if you don't do these things, you will be sinning against the Lord. Know for sure that you will be punished for your sin. Jeremiah 16 verses 17 to 18. I see everything they do. They cannot hide from me the things they do. Their sin is not hidden from my eyes. I will pay back the people of Judah twice for every one of their sins, because they have made my land unclean. They have filled my country with their hateful idols. Psalm 139 verses 1 to 2. Lord, you have examined me and know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts before I think them. Psalm 139 verses 3 to 7 You know where I go and where I lie down. You know everything I do. Lord, even before I say a word, you already know it. You are all around me, in front and in back, and have put your hand on me. Your knowledge is amazing to me. It is more than I can understand. Where can I go to get away from your spirit? Where can I run from you? Proverbs 28 verse 13 If you hide your sins, you will not succeed. If you confess and reject them, you will receive mercy. The solution to some of these problems may be found in the solution provided by the same scripture. If you confess and reject them, hidden sins, you will receive mercy. If you confess and reject them, adultery and fornication, you will receive mercy. What are you hiding? Are you a secret thief? You steal at your workplace? You now have a smart approach to stealing. Beware, only God knows your smart stealing ways. If you confess and reject them, stealing, you will receive mercy. There is high risk in keeping secrets as according to the Bible. Isaiah 59 verses 1 to 2 Surely the Lord's power is enough to save you. He can hear you when you ask Him for help. It is your evil that has separated you from your God. Your sins cause Him to turn away from you. 
so he does not hear you. Psalm 66 verses 18 to 19. If I had harbored sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. However, God heard. He listened to my prayer. Repent. Clear the closet of hidden sins. 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14 If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land.